What's up everyone and thank you for stopping by the channel. Today's project is this Lawn Boy mower and the problem is that it was rolling just fine. However, after we serviced it, the right drive wheel is now locked up and won't spin. Let's take a good look at it, find out what's wrong with it, and hopefully we can fix it. In this video, we try and repair this mower. However, it may not be the exact repair you need to make to yours. We'll explore other options later in the video. In a previous video, we figured out why this mower wasn't starting and also serviced it so it was ready for the mowing season. The problem was that after getting it back on its wheels, the right drive wheel wouldn't spin. Unfortunately, it wasn't obvious until we started the mower and tried to use the self-propel. So today, we're going to take a closer look at it and see if we can figure it out. The first thing I want to do is start the mower and show you the problem. Now the left wheel is spinning when we activate the self-propel, however the right drive wheel isn't spinning at all, even when pushing the mower. It's unfortunate, but it looks like we have a gearbox problem. That means we need to put this mower on its back so we can inspect it, and to safely do that, I'm going to drain all the fluids so we don't make a huge mess. Now after draining the gas, I'm going to run the engine till it dies, that way there's no gas in the lines or the carburetor. The good part about running the engine for a few minutes is that the oil is now warm and will make draining the oil from the engine a lot easier as well. The only reason I want the mower on its back is to make filming easier. But if we do open the gearbox, all of the fluid should stay in there, but as you see later on, it doesn't go according to plan. Now after taking the right wheel off, you can see it wasn't just the wheel that was stuck, it definitely has to do with the gearbox. Now with both axles visible, we can try spinning the wheels to see just how serious the issue really is. The axle on the right of the screen, which is really the left wheel, spins along with its axle. However, the axle on the left of the screen is locked up. That means we need to remove the cover on the gearbox and see if we can find what's causing our issue. To remove the cover on the gearbox, we need to remove all these Torx screws. After that, we can then try separating the cover from the rest of the gearbox. And I hate to say it, by the extra sealant coming out of the cover, I don't think this is going to be easy. That means we're going to have to get a little aggressive. I'm going to tap a flathead screwdriver parallel to the mating surface so I don't damage it. This is important because when I clean the mating surface later on, I'm going to find a few surprises. Now after struggling for quite some time trying to be as careful as possible, we're finally able to see the underside of the cover and what I see is kind of interesting. I see not just blue sealant but a light gray color one as well. More than likely this cover has been off before, probably for the same reason. Now if you rotate the good side, you can see how the gears are supposed to work. If you spin it in this direction, you're supposed to catch, and then disengage if you turn it the other direction. You can also see that the gear oil is very dirty, so we have to change that out eventually. If we try and do the same thing to the bad side, you can see it's not turning, and the problem isn't obvious just yet. There also seems to be a problem with the two gears actually disengaging as well. If we look at the good side of the gearbox, we can see a pin that goes through the axle and seats in the outer plastic gear. That means the other side of the gearbox should look the same. However, if you take a closer look, you can see that the pin is gone. That means it's either floating around the gearbox or it's come out of the axle and is jammed against the case for the gearbox. Unfortunately, it looks like the gear oil has leaked out of the top of the gearbox, which is okay since we're going to change it anyway, but the problem is I have a huge mess I have to take care of now. So I was able to find the missing pin. If I push a small screwdriver where the pin is supposed to be, I can feel that it's still in the axle. That means I just need to push it out of the axle and then try to figure out how to fix the problem. 
So this is the pin, and the plan was to replace it because I thought it was worn out, and that's why it slipped out of the gear. The problem, though, is that it's a very strange size at 137 thousandths of an inch, and that's bigger than the pin I have available, which was only 127 thousandths of an inch. So that meant I would have to try and get a bigger pin. But then I started to realize that the pin wasn't the problem, it was the plastic instead. It was very unlikely that the metal pin would change size sitting in a plastic gear. More than likely, the plastic would wear first. That's when I came up with the conclusion that this is the same reason why this gearbox was opened previously. There was a strip of RTV across where part of the pin would be located at. I'm guessing they were using it to hold the pin in place, but eventually it broke. Unfortunately, if you look at the other side of the gear, the opening is now damaged and won't hold the pin in place anymore. Now I have to figure out how I'm going to repair it, or maybe even replace it. The first thing I want to do is replace the pin, and then clean off the gears, and start coming up with ideas. Unfortunately, you cannot buy these gears separately, and that means we'd have to replace the entire assembly. Surprisingly, you can still find these on the market for about $80 after taxes. The problem is that I could go buy another used mower for that price, so I'm not going to go that route. After brainstorming for a few minutes, I came up with a solution, and a permanent one at that. I'm going to reshape the opening to no longer be an opening and close it off completely. The reason is the gear was already damaged, so I had nothing to lose. The second reason is this is my mower, so I don't have to worry about asking permission from anyone. After getting the damaged side closed off, I'm going to do the same to the other side as well. Once the job is done, I'll test it to make sure it's working like it's supposed to, then I'll figure out how to close up the gearbox. Now, it may not look pretty, but I'm not worried about how it looks, only that it functions correctly. So it looks like it's working like it's supposed to, and that means we now have to clean all the sealant off of the mating surfaces. I'm going to do the best job that I can, but it's going to take a lot of time. I'm also not going to bore you with the footage of me cleaning it, but this is what it looks like after it's done. It's not perfect, but the new sealant should take care of any of the bits that I didn't get. Now, I wasn't comfortable sealing it while it was still on the mower, so instead, we're going to remove the entire assembly. The reason I'm doing this is, since the dirty oil leaked out of the top seal, I wasn't sure if it would do it again. If we needed to replace the top seal, well, we need to remove it anyway. I hate to say it, but there are a lot of plastic guards that we need to take off to get the room we need to remove the entire assembly. If I knew I was going to do this beforehand, I would have done it while it was right side up instead of upside down. That means some of the images you're seeing are obviously upside down. Once the plastics are out of the way, we now have to take off the drive gears. It helps to use snap ring pliers, but if you don't have any, you might have to get creative. Just be careful, if you do damage the snap rings, you'll need to replace them, otherwise they may not keep the gear on the axle. After that, we need to disconnect the self propel cable from its anchor. After sliding the assembly to the left, we're able to free the right side. However, there's not enough slack to slide out the other side. That means we need to make a little bit more slack. The way we're going to do that is to take off two of these bolts that hold the plate with the bearing to the deck. After that, we should be able to lift the loose end above the deck and slide out the other side. The last thing to do is to remove the belt from the pulley. Just in case we need to, I'm going to take off the belt guard for the possibility that we have to replace the top seal and hopefully we won't need to. So here's the cover and the lower portion with sealant on the mating surfaces. It looks messy because whoever took the case apart the first time gouged both surfaces pretty badly and to make up for the gouges, I'll have to go heavy with the sealant. Next, I'm going to fill the larger lower portion with gear oil and watch for any leaks from the top seal. I'm not sure how much to put in, so I'm going to fill it almost level with the mating surface. I also let the sealant tack up for a few minutes before carefully replacing the cover, followed by all the screws. After that, I'll put the belt and its guard back on the gearbox, then I'll work the belt around the blade and on the pulley, and then slide the axles back into the bearings. Once it's back on the mower, don't forget to connect the cable to its anchor on the belt yard. Now at this point, we just have to put all the metal and plastic guards back on the mower. I do want to mention, this mower is actually very light. The deck is very thin and a simple design, so it's not heavy. And even though this engine is an overhead valve design, it's a small engine at only 149 cc's, so it's not heavy either. That means if I wanted to, I could have just removed the right side drive gear and the wheel would spin freely again, and we could still use the mower with only one wheel driving the self-propel. 
I probably should have considered that before beginning this process because it would have saved me a lot of time. Now that everything is back on this mower, you can see that both wheels are spinning and working just like they're supposed to. The next thing to do is to put this mower back on its wheels, put some oil in the engine and some gas in the tank and try starting it and hopefully we didn't forget anything. So the self propel seems to be working just fine and it should stay that way for a while. The only thing I'm worried about though is if the plastics were to break on the other gear and the same thing happens except on the other wheel. I probably should have sealed up those pins as well. I guess we'll see how long it takes for that to happen. Another reason why the wheel would lock up is that the drive gear was jammed against the gear on the wheel. Now the fix would be to remove the wheel and fix the part that was damaged either the drive gear or replace the wheel as the gear on the wheel cannot be purchased separately. So my question is, would you have tried fixing the gearbox internals like I did or would you have just bypassed the issue by removing the drive gear so the wheel wasn't locked up anymore? If you did do the bypass, you would have saved yourself about four hours worth of work. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate your time here. Please feel free to ask me any questions and I hope to see you in the next video.